Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we are going to start a new course on Kubernetes for beginners. And I won't say that after completing this course, you would be become a Kubernetes master or you'll just be like a champ in Kubernetes, right? It's just a basic course for beginners and it will give you a better understanding of what exactly is Kubernetes and what are its moving parts because there are a lot of moving parts in Kubernetes, right? Uh, so I'm really sorry that I have to stop my advanced shell scripting course abruptly because actually I wanted to do this, this particular course because I mean shell scripting, we can do it anytime, but this is the thing which I wanted to do myself. All right. So coming back to our point. So first we'll, in this video, I'll just cover basically what is exactly Kubernetes because many of us don't exactly know what Kubernetes is and then we'll cover Kubernetes primitive. All right. So what is Kubernetes? So Kubernetes is, I mean, it was a project that was born at Google. It was called Borg at that time, but then Google made it uh, open source and made it free. And then it became a CNCF project and then it matured as Kubernetes. All right, so that's about its history. What exactly is this? So this in a simple one line uh, definition, it is a platform that you can use to build and deploy your containerized workload. And when I say containerized workloads, that is, I mean, any workload, which you want to deploy should be, I mean, in form of some container image. I mean, it can be a Docker container image or it can be any other, uh, it can be a cryo image, it can be RKT or anything, right? So, but it has to be a containerized workload, right? You can't deploy, uh, I mean, code directly onto Kubernetes cluster. You have to package it in some form of image, right? And then the second definition comes to what exactly is Kubernetes? It's a container orchestration. So when I say container orchestration, basically that means it manages your containers, your uh, basically your containerized workloads. So it manages their scaling, their scheduling, and it manages their rollbacks and rollouts and things like that, all right? So all that is, I mean, taken care by Kubernetes itself. So that's what it is. Kubernetes, it's just a platform. You just need to keep in mind. And many cloud services, are actually offering Kubernetes as a pass, so platform as a service, right? Like Google Cloud has GKE, AWS has Amazon Kubernetes service, Azure has AKS and things like that. So all different clouds, Oracle and everyone is offering their Kubernetes service in some form or the other as a platform basically, all right? So that's what Kubernetes is. Now let's look into what is or what are Kubernetes primitive. All right, so coming to Kubernetes primitives. So in order to have a working cluster where you can deploy your workloads, your containerized workloads, a list of component is given by Kubernetes that is need to be there for you to have a working cluster. So as you can see, I've listed down those components. The first one is API server, then we have etcd, then we have controller manager, scheduler, kube proxy, and kubelet. So out of this, these two, they run on the worker node and the rest four, they run on the master node. So like Kubernetes, I told you, is a master and a worker node architecture. So you have master nodes and you have worker nodes. You can have any number of worker nodes and master nodes for, I mean, generally you go for odd number of master nodes, like three or five. Five are enough. I mean, five masters are enough to manage a cluster of any size. All right. So that you must keep in mind. All right. So now let's talk about our primitives. So first one is the API server. So let's draw this circle. And this is our API server. So API server basically exposes the Kubernetes API to the external world, to the end user like you and me, or to the worker nodes. So suppose if you want to deploy your application, who would you talk to in Kubernetes cluster? That's what API server does. So it provides you a platform to connect to your uh, Kubernetes cluster. It basically exposes the Kubernetes API. And also, I mean, on the worker nodes also use this API to talk to master, all right? Coming to etcd. So etcd, if you don't know, it's a key, va key value based uh, database, right? And it stores information about everything what's happening in Kubernetes cluster. So, I mean, it has information about nodes, all the worker nodes, it has information about the pods which are running, uh, it has information about the deployments, uh, services and everything. So I've, we haven't talked about pods, deployments and services. So you just, I mean, for now you just take it in. So basically Kubernetes uh, etcd stores information about whatever is happening in the cluster and whatever components are there 
in the cluster at that particular moment so it has uh, information about everything all right coming to controller manager so you have few controller manager that uh, managers that take care of some basic uh, operation stuff as you can say so like you have a node controller so node controller manages onboarding of a new node so if you add a new node to the cluster that is managed by node controller similarly you have replication controller so replication controller basically ensures that you have specified number of uh, containers running uh, when in your application right so they take care of that so this is what basically controller manager does then we come to scheduler so scheduler is a very important part of kubernetes cluster it basically takes care of scheduling your uh, containerized workloads onto the worker node so this basically i mean scheduler basically has information about uh, the worker node capacity and it uh, on basis of that capacity it deploys your uh, containers so suppose if your container is a very uh, say cpu intensive uh, workload right so it will look into the cluster and it will find the most appropriate worker to deploy that container so that's what scheduler does coming to kubelet so kubelet is basically a process which is running on your worker node and basically it's like you can think of kubelet as a captain of a ship right so if this is a ship so kubelet is your captain so everything which is happening on the worker node so basically basically uh, the api server itself talks to the kubelet i mean whenever it wants so suppose if i want to deploy a container so i'll tell the api server that i want to deploy a container and the api server will then talk to kubelet on the worker node to basically tell it to deploy the container right on that particular worker node so that's what kubelet does it basically talks to the kubernetes master and basically does everything what is happening on the node right then you have the last component which is kube proxy so on a worker node you can have multiple containers running right so these containers i mean if they want to talk to each other how do they talk so that uh, part is taken care by the kube proxy so kube proxy makes sure that there are rules in place uh, for containers on a work, work one worker node to talk to each other right so that is what the function of kube proxy is so kube proxy all right so this is what primitives are in kubernetes so this is all about theory right so in the next video i'll show you how you can deploy a single node kubernetes cluster using minikube on your laptop i mean you can be a mac or linux based system so you can will we are going to use minikube to basically do our testing deploy our application run our workloads right so we'll not be creating any fancy kubernetes cluster of say 10 nodes or 20 nodes we'll be simply using a one node cluster and for practice purposes i think cube mini cube is sufficient enough for you to give you enough practice all right so this is it for this video guys i hope you like the video i hope you like the new course which which we are going to bring to you all right and we are going to cover each and everything in detail i mean the api server etcd scheduler proxy pods deployments services i mean that, that's why kubernetes is so confusing because it has so many moving parts and many people are actually confused so let's work together on that and see if we can get rid of this confusion and see if we can get something out of this course right so please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and yeah thank you for watching